Um, this um, session is about powerful photography. And um, I'll introduce myself first of all. Um, it's aiming to talk about how photography can really inspire and motivate learners. Um, so my name's Fiona and I'm a secondary school teacher just outside Glasgow. I went to Glasgow School of Art and I went straight into teaching. Um, I knew that I wanted to be a teacher. I loved doing my, my degree at uh, Glasgow School of Art, but I always knew that I wanted to be a, a teacher. Um, despite my, my parents both being teachers and, and not wanting me to, to go into that at all, um, I, I totally went against that. Um, and I did visual communication at art school so I specialised in photography um, but did a little bit of illustration a little bit of graphic design in there as well and I think that course for me really showed me um, it was a lot about ideas a lot about um, communicating um, meaning um, encouraging me to think about the way images um, speak to people um, so I made lots of books for my, my degree show, but it was all based um, around my kind of love of education um, and kind of looking at things from a young person's point of view. And uh, I looked at um, bullying in schools, I looked at school uniform, um, I looked at belonging in a school. So it was a really great chance for me to, to kind of combine my two interests of education and photography. So I think it was really only natural that it would be a kind of matter of time before I wanted to share with this with young people. Um, and I wanted to, to share my love and passion for making images and communicating images. And I think that's why I've chosen to talk about this today. Because I think that um, photography sometimes is a way that young people can communicate themselves even if they think they're not very good at drawing, okay? Whatever that means, whatever it means to be good at art, right? And hopefully this session's going to tease out a wee bit about why I think photography is a really powerful way for learners to, to be able to do that and to express their world differently, okay? Um, I work in a school just outside Glasgow. I've been teaching photography um, for more than 10 years. When I arrived at that school, um, they already had to hire photography up and running. Um, and yeah, it's a really popular choice in my subject, in my, my school. Um, we have this year, we have um, nearly 40 pupils doing higher photography. Um, they're all senior pupils and they love it absolutely love it it's just grown in popularity um and so, so we really have kind of nearly 50 percent of our final year pupils are doing higher photography um and we've now introduced a kind of starter photography course kind of leading into that so i love teaching it i, I love teaching art and design um, and i do still teach lots of art and design but i also love teaching photography um, and I've, I've taught a lot of pupils art and design and i would be lying if i said that um you know, I didn't love that as well, but very often when I meet a new class, the first thing that they say to me, Miss, Miss, I can't draw, I can't draw, I'm, I'm not a good drawer, um, such and such is, is a good drawer in this class. And I want you to think about that for a minute, I want you to imagine that mindset of coming into a class and believing that you can't draw, that you can't do it before you've even, um, you know, taken your pencil out of your pencil case. They're quite openly telling me that they know who the good drawers are in the class. They'll tell me that they maybe like art, but they can't do it. They're rubbish at it. Um, and, and sometimes they will surprise themselves, but sometimes, more often than not, it's a lot of hard work to kind of retrain that mentality. And I think probably there's lots of art teachers in here who will relate to that, who will have had those conversations before. So I think it's really important for us to challenge that, because like Deborah said, or uh, she quoted Elizabeth, if we're alive, we're creative. And I, I tell people that everybody can draw, everyone can draw. Um, we're all, we all do it in a different way and we all do it um, you know, to our own ability, but everybody can pick up a pencil and, and make marks. And it's like that with the camera as well. It's like that with photography. So I found that, um, that photography is sometimes a, a kind of way into that, something that's maybe more accepted by them. And as a result of that, um, they, you know, they're maybe a little bit more open to having a go with that in photography. 
So that's part of the reason why I think that photography is um, so important. Um, because I, I do think it is a way, um, unlike drawing, which is a little bit more acceptable for them. And there's, there's quite a few reasons why that's the case. So firstly, um, anyone can be a photographer, yeah? Um, mobile phones, we've, we see that all the time, point and shoot cameras um, have made photography more of an art form for them. It's, it's more um, an everyday thing for them. It's, it's not something that just some people are good at and you're not good at. Um, I want you to think for a minute about the photographs that you've taken in the last year. So if you were to open up your phone just now and to look at your camera roll, and I want you to think about how many photos you've taken. Why did you take them? To capture beauty of something, to record a, a special moment in time, um, to create a memory. I think more than ever during the pandemic, when so much of our world has been stripped away, we realise that the arts and photography in particular has been something that we've still been able to enjoy, still been able to, to get comfort from, still being able to fulfil us in some way. And our young people are doing that on a daily basis. They are comfortable with lifting their camera phone and they'll often be seen at breaks and lunchtime, snapping selfies. And I feel this is something that we can really tap into. Unlike their reluctance to, to sometimes draw if they're good at it, photography allows them to record their world in a different way. It's something which they, they do every day and it's a world which they know about already through social media. And, you know, it, it, that brings its own issues in itself. But let's not forget the positives that it brings as well. It's encouraging our young people to look. They're experts in photography, on filters, on camera angles and those effects. So let's use that. Let's give them an opportunity to use the thing that, that they, they have possibly used to sustain them throughout the pandemic when they haven't had school in their lives. Let's use that in a classroom to allow them to achieve that success. So most young people will have already, you know, most young people are doing this. They are already photographers. Um, and and let, we need to use that. Yeah, so we need to use that, that inroad that we already have and to, to tap into that. So another way in which photography um, is far more accessible than it once was is the fact that we no longer need dark rooms. We don't need expensive lighting. We don't need film. We don't need chemicals and enlargers. And, and these are all brilliant things. Um, I've taught in schools before um, where we have had a dark room and they're wonderful opportunities for people. People love that. They relish being in the dark room and experiencing that. But there's also so many other inexpensive and effective and really impressive ways to allow our pupils to learn and experience the creativity which photography can allow. And we'll look at some of these later on. Um, I'm going to show you some ideas of how we integrate um, these kind of things into our, our photography curriculum. It's so accessible though because it allows young people to document their world. They don't always need to go and find exciting things to photograph. And our job, I think, is a way to find an exciting way to photograph something which is ordinary for them, something that's in their world, but to look at it differently. Another thing that I really love about photography um, is that this idea that it's instant for so many young people. And we know young people can be impatient. They can be reluctant to persevere with something that takes time. Um, I know lots of, of you here are art teachers, and I know that a lot of you um, will have had that situation in class when people just, the pupils, they, they just have had enough. They, they, they can't see how working into something, um, you know, will make it better. An aspect of photography that works really well is that instant result, that instant gratification. Um, they can see the result. 
and the ability to see that there and then is hugely motivating for young people. There's still that excitement in the time that you know, they take the shot and then they have to flip back to see what it's actually turned out like. And I think that really is, is what gives them the buzz, that they don't have to wait days or hours for something to, to come to completion. And again, photo editing software, which is often built into cameras, um, it allows young people to edit and amend images, layering, cropping, adjusting at lighting in an instant. Okay, so I think for many young people, that's another real appeal of photography. And this ability to make things better, to improve the results and adjust areas that they aren't happy with, allows learners, I think, to experience this success. And I found that there's a, a, a greater deal of growth mindset um, in improving a photograph than sometimes there is for working into a drawing. It's okay to make changes to a photograph for some reason. There's a, there's a different culture around editing photographs, whereas fixing something that's not quite right in a drawing maybe has a more negative connotation. And maybe some art teachers will, will kind of chip in with that and, and give their comments on that. So it, it definitely just seems more accessible, acceptable to find and fix blemishes in a, a digital photograph than maybe it is to, to correct something that's not been drawn correctly. Um, maybe that's the technology that's the, the vehicle for that. Um, but yeah, I think they're, they're very motivated by, by seeing that accomplishment. And photography can be a vehicle for many to experience a way into art. So instead of feeling frustrated, uh, by being unable to capture their, their world in the way they want to communicate it through traditional art, photography can allow them to, to share their thoughts and their feelings and their ideas in ways which doesn't require pencil control, doesn't require them to be able to, to handle a media certain ways, and that boosts their confidence. Um, there, there's no stopping them. Once they've experienced that kind of confidence boost, um, they are off and running and that's what you want to to be able to feed that creativity so how do we deliver fun and impactful photography tasks in my school so um we as i said earlier our, our starter photography courses are a really useful way to teach our young people to see their world differently and this we focus on lots of compositional techniques. We don't go too much into the kind of ins and outs of how the camera works. They use their mobile phones, they use point and shoot cameras, and we explore key concepts such as depth of field and rule of thirds, encouraging our pupils to, to use this knowledge to look more closely and to see their world in different ways. And as they, they build up this confidence and they learn more about how the camera works, this knowledge then underpins their approach and gives them the understanding to be creative. We explore shutter speed, um, we um, work with, with light trail photography, we do simple movement tasks to emphasise the knowledge of freezing and blurring motion and they just love this. Again, it's that instant result. We can talk about it, we can teach them um, how it works, but until they actually see it and they actually make it themselves um, and that, that kind of clicks into place, excuse the pun, um, they are absolutely... Um, it, engaged in what they are doing. So yeah, so light trails are really popular, really easy to do. They love painting with light. And again, this doesn't have to be complicated. I've, I've gone to pound shops and, and got LED lights and attached them onto, um, you know, string or onto blocks of wood um, and, and use that to, to create that. We coloured them with tissue paper to create those colours. So it can be really simple, but really, really effective. Again, here we're using water balloons um, to capture and think about that shutter speed and um, you know, use that in order to, to help them to understand the, the knowledge that they need. Um, yeah, another really simple little task, dropping something into water um, and capturing that, that motion. And here we've got some oil and water and coloured surfaces, again, another really, really um, interesting way to look at their world different, something so simple that they probably have seen many times, but looking at it in a completely different way. And macro photography is another way that we um, 
really engage our learners. We've got one macro lens in the department and it really helps them to, to see that depth of field. But we've also purchased the little clip-on macro lenses which can go into their mobile phones. And again, we, we teach them to, to use these in order to see things differently. And I just think it's so brilliant to see pupils grow in confidence through the photography. Often pupils that find it really difficult to express themselves have now got a way to communicate their thoughts. Learners who struggle maybe with literacy can convey words and meanings in ways which they've never experienced before. And um, they might have, have not experienced this success in other subjects. So they finally have this freedom to be creative and get that pleasure from the accomplishment, that fulfillment, the being able to achieve something is so important and it motivates them to, to go further. When we get to the final year, uh, they really have freedom to, to go off and explore whatever they want to. So we've kind of held their hand all the way along, um, held their hand while they've pressed the, the shutter. And then when they get to their final project, they really can fly themselves. Um, and we have pupils, you know, going off and, and exploring issues like mental health. Um, pregnancy, digital dysfunction, looking at um, things which are no longer, you know, of use to us. Um, and it really surprised me um, the, the ability that they come up with to, to take their own interests and combine that with photography and really look at it in a, a completely different way to maybe they, they would have thought of having not had that, that knowledge. So, that's my thoughts on photography. It's, that's flown by. Um, I can't believe I've actually um, spoken for that length of time. Um, if, there are anybody, if there's anybody who has some questions, um, I'll stop sharing uh, my screen now and I will have a wee look. If there's anything that you want to ask, you want to stick your hand up and you want to have a chat, um, I'm absolutely happy to, to answer any of your questions. Um, but yeah, I'm really um, passionate about the way in which, and we have a lot of students who combine their art and their photography and they maybe find a way into to art through the photography. We have a lot of pupils who've never done art before and they just come back and they're, because it's something that they're interested in, they they pick it up and they, they don't have to have had that prior knowledge of art. I think that's why I really love it um, because pupils who have never been in our department before um, in six years come back and really get something, something from that. So uh, we introduce photography, we do a bit of it at the end of third year, so I'm not sure, I think Jane, you are in Scotland. So yeah, um, I think, that we introduced that at the end of third year. So let me see what age would that be, kind of 14, 15. And then we introduced it in S4 as a, an NPA photography. And then we do higher photography in fifth and sixth year. Um, I hope that answers um, your questions. Um, Brilliant. Oh, thank you, Sam. I'm glad that was useful for you. I'm happy um, to connect I'm on Twitter and I love um, talking to, to our educators. So if you want to get in touch with me, please connect on Twitter. Um, I'm happy to. That's my, my handle. Um, yeah, please just go on and, and drop me a message. I would love to, to chat. I see there's a question there um, from Phil. How do we as art teachers? It's something that is... Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, really, really important. I think it's about teaching young people um, that, that responsibility as, as citizens, as responsibility as, as young people in the, the photography class, um, teaching them, and we do do that, you know, teaching them um, about you know, copyright of photo, photographs, about, you know, model release forms when they're, they're taking photographs of, of other people. And it's, it's teaching them the difference between, you know, snapping something um, and using that as a, a, a photograph, which has been really well planned and really thought out. And I think it, it helps them once they understand that to, to really see their responsibility as a photographer and to take it quite seriously. Um, fabulous. 
Um, yeah, I'm at Kirkent. I'm actually um, I'm at Kirkintilloch High School, but I am just about to to take on a new role just before summer. Um, I'm relocating with my family to Oban High School, where I'm going to be head of art, music, and drama. Um, and really excited to be bringing photography um, to to that school as well. Absolutely, Dillis. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, sometimes um, the instantness of photography is is so much um, so powerful um, for for young people who who maybe do struggle with with drawing um, and that kind of perseverance with something in, in order, to, you know, for them to. And I think that's really important. I'm not saying that they we, we take that away completely because I think it's really important that we build that up in our young people as well. But um, I think sometimes to to get them hooked, um, and, and particularly for young people who maybe haven't um, experienced much success in other areas of the curriculum, I think photography is is one way that we can really hook them into that, and then we can build on all those other skills. Of, of resilience and perseverance um, and yeah and working towards something because because they want to because they can they can see um that they can be successful um and they, they have that desire to to get better um which i think sometimes yeah is is, is difficult to achieve in other words thank you so much leanne thank you so much ross Fab. Excellent. I really appreciate you all um, coming along to, to hear what I had to say. Um, and please, if I can do anything to help or answer any questions, then please get in touch. Um, it's been so lovely to, to connect with all of you. I hope you enjoy the day. I hope um, I was half as inspiring as, as Connor and Deborah. Um, enjoy the rest of the sessions that you have today.